Hello, um, hope everyone's doing well. Today I'm going to talk about Rogue Trader as an RPG and sort of as a skirmish game come RPG. For those of you who aren't familiar with this game, I'm quite excited to talk about this because this is something that's been inspiring me lately and um, getting me to kind of think about the the crossing of RPGs and war games, both of which I enjoy. So this was produced by um, Games Workshop and Citadel Miniatures in 1987. This was the first version of Warhammer 40,000 that ever appeared. Um, and as you can see, it it's subtitled as Rogue Trader. Now, for those of you who have played different editions of this game, um, there'll be some things that you're familiar with. So, for instance, you know, this probably appears to you as a space marine, and that is what it is. Um, and, you know, there's orcs and Eldar and some of those canonical things about the setting that people will be familiar with. But what really struck me with Rogue Trader is just how kind of early and emergent it is you know it's i think just the way things are painted the way things are presented of course you know the sort of the beaky helmets all of this is is has some similarities both in terms of gameplay and aesthetic but it's it's certainly got its own thing going on as well um and you know for the time so as i said it was 1987 for the time this is really quite an um beautiful book uh, my copy I got, I was extremely lucky to get fairly cheaply, um, but they can really, really run up in terms of price uh, these days. So, you know, if, if this is something that you're wanting to get into, um, they can be pricey. Um, so, yeah, getting a hold of it can be a little bit tricky, but um, it really has a lot of those kind of fundamental things that we would associate with Warhammer nowadays, movement, weapon skill, ballistic skill, uh, strength, toughness, wounds, initiative, uh, attacks, etc. It's all of those characteristics. And in terms of the actual rules, even up until, you know, sort of third edition, there's some things that are similar. But what, what I think is interesting about this is it kind of encourages a bit more of a skirmish style of game um, rather than a full out um, you know, army versus army kind of approach that we might be more used to. Um, maybe something a bit more reminiscent of, say, combat patrol as a more um, recent analogue. But what, what I think is awesome is you've got all of these really sort of out there <laughs> models. Like I love the, you know, the Slana awesome. And um, and again, you've got your, your staples like Orc and Elder and um, uh, Squats and um, you know even space marines and just even just random people in armored um, armored suits you know and these are that's the first those are sort of the first early uh, dreadnoughts to me what this kind of reminds me of in a way is the space that necromunda or mordheim might sit within uh, being kind of a role play game in the sense that you know you are um, kind of having these characters and there's these very sort of strong, I think it, it kind of encourages quite a strong um, amount of narrative. Um, if you play as it's written in the book, there is actually a GM, a game master, which is very reminiscent of, of an RPG. Um, you know, there's all sorts of rules for, you know, sort of assembling forces. It's, it's, it's quite uh, modular or there's a lot of freedom involved with how you choose forces and what sort of stories you want to tell within this universe and so that's why I kind of think this is quite suited um, potentially for um, you know kind of a role play game or, or sort of a skirmish game with the idea of character progression in it and as you can see some of this artwork in my opinion is is pretty pretty awesome and as I said, for the time, I think it just really, even today, just really does stand up. Um, some of the, you know, I've, I've started reading through the rules um, in more detail, and um, some of it's a little bit strange, but, you know, by what we might think of uh, today. But I think, you know, it, it does seem quite house rulable, and there's a lot of um, you know, as I said, a lot of flexibility within this. Another really great thing about this is if you were wanting to begin to play this game, you probably only need a handful of models because, as I said, you're working more at a skirmish level um, than anything. In many ways, it's actually quite a complete game. You know, you've still got 
uh, psychers and all you know mutants and and uh, you know ways to generate mutants and this particular image here I I really like um, sort of shows all the different mutants to me one of the real appeals about this is that it is set within the, the 40k world um, but it just feels a lot less defined than what we're used to now and because it's less confined for me that sort of creates it sort of generates a bit more creativity on my part and I start thinking about you know maybe I kind of set a set a campaign or something within the broad um, the, the broad 40k universe but you know it, it really feels a lot more um, yours to tweak and to, to make changes to and everything's so loose that you can you can kind of just do things that you that you feel like which feels a little bit almost sacrilegious um, at this stage with later editions because everything is so um, spelt out and again you know if you're constructing sort of a, a group of um, or a side uh, they can kind of take any weapon they want really like it's very yeah it's just very customizable and yet, at the same time, there's this, you know, sort of chapter dedicated to the law. And I think most people reading this would still recognize a lot of the key themes that we've come become used to with, uh, you know, the wider uh, 40k universe. The, you know, the space travel, the Imperium, um, the Astronomicon, the Emperor, all of this, all of this sort of stuff. Because it's looser, because you're able to kind of make the setting a bit more your own, to me it feels that way, it feels a bit more inviting for the GM to do that. Arguably, I, I find this world that they set out in Rogue Trader to be quite a lot more grim, and in a weird way, because it's so loose, because it's a bit more grim, it feels quite believable, and you can kind of take that weirdness and that grimness in whatever direction you, you really want to take it in. Some of the later books that came out um, enabled you to play it more like a sort of second, third, fourth, up to, you know, kind of 10th edition 40k style that we might be used to now. But certainly with just this rule book, you get, you get a lot of um, really just interesting ideas um, and it really is fairly self-contained as a, um, as, you know, just as kind of its own thing. Gives us uh, some of these chapter markings. You'll probably all recognize uh, Ultramarines and Space Wolves, Dark Angels. Just a lot of these would be familiar to people, um, but at the same time, the what I find really interesting is that the paint schemes are just so much looser. Like, there are, you know, obviously the Ultramarines are fairly similar to what we know now, but some of the painting that you sort of see in this era of White Dwarf is, you know, you have like camo rhinos and just the, again, it just feels a lot less tethered to that canon uh, that we that we know of now. Even the models are quite charming in their own way, like I wouldn't mind picking some up just to paint, the orcs especially are pretty cool and the, you know, the space marines. If you want your um, game or your campaign to include certain um, creatures like, you know, the Amble, which people might be familiar with, um, warp entities, all of this. So yeah, to, to me, it kind of really does sit between that middle ground of a an RPG and a um, sort of a skirmish war game. Uh, and a lot of the, the areas that it talks about, uh, like Hell's Reach and stuff, Logan's World, just really really quite inspiring and it just immediately makes me want to play in this universe which is which is cool and I could see some kind of Necromunda Ash Wastes type crossovers with with what's going on here um if you know if, if people are Necromunda players or something I could see you know using models for that to kind of create a bit of a um a narrative it's also interesting to note that, you know, thinking of this as an RPG or, or you know, being inspired by this and, and people thinking of how you might turn this into an RPG is nothing new. So, for instance, in um, Dragon Magazine 149, there's this article that Ken Rolston um, wrote at the time. So, you know, it's 1989, so two years after uh, Rogue Traders come out, but he talks about um, Rogue Trader and how, you know, he gives some suggestions if you were to basically convert this to an RPG in some ways that um, a GM might go about doing that. 
and you know has some has some reasonable suggestions. So they talk about maybe using either using some of the existing rules as written, or potentially you know kind of using the chassis of boxed edition of um, D and I think he's actually talking about the seventy four white box. And then he also you know talks about how you could implement um, you know the kind of the tone and wounds and healing. So he offers these sort of injury tables and critical hits. And um, kind of creating a, a party of adventurers and um, including some scenarios for for that adventuring. So yeah, as I said, this me kind of thinking of it as an RPG. I'm not talking about anything like original here, but to me, it, it really does. As I said, it really does sort of read as as sort of a pseudo RPG. So my question is: Have you played this firstly, and how did you play it? Is this something that's on your list of things to buy or or to try? I personally, as I said at the beginning, am just quite in, like quite excited by this. I you know I, I do really want to um, at least put together a few scenarios uh, and play with some friends. But yeah, let me know what you think. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.